Hi, I'm Pat Carter, technical trainer at Clearview, a clear choice. This is part two of our setup series, and I want to explain to you how the setup wizard actually works. When you first take the unit out of the box and plug everything in, the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to launch the startup wizard. Now, you can certainly turn this off so it doesn't happen every time you, first, every time you reboot your unit, but just by clicking the button here that says startup. So now we're going to go through the process, and I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to take to set up the, the DVR or the NVR for the very first time. So the system time and date are there by default. You can certainly change them if you're in a different time zone. Normally they come with Eastern Standard Time already preset. To set them is very, very simple. All you do is click on the number, it'll bring up a little keypad, and you click on the keypad. Remember I was mentioning in the last video how easy it is to set these up with the mouse and not as much with the remote control. This is where that mouse is going to come in really handy. The date is very simple to change. The time, of course, very simple, same keypad. And AM and PM is just a quick toggle with a mouse click. The date format, by default, is in the US style of month, date, year. If you'd like to change it, you're more than welcome to change it to year, month, date, or date, month, year. There's also a daylight savings time setting. If you're in a region that does use daylight savings time, you may want to go ahead and set it, and I'll show you how this works. Very easy, just hit set. Normally, you would set it by the day of the week. We use uh, March, the very second Sunday at 2 a.m., and it ends, of course, in November on the very first Sunday at 2 a.m. Once you've set your daylight savings time, well, make sure we got that, that time right. There you go. Once we've set our daylight savings time, we just hit OK, and we check the little box to enable it, and now the unit will automatically adjust for daylight savings. The other section here is the time format. If you want to use a 24-hour clock or a 12-hour clock, the DVR, the NVR, will automatically adjust to that change, and it will display the correct time. The default language is English. You can custom order your unit in separate languages if you are going to be sending it somewhere else outside of the area. The default for hard drive full is overwrite, meaning when the hard drive reaches the very end, it just starts back over at the very beginning. The option for that is to stop recording once it fills up. If you are going to be archiving hard drives or removing hard drives, you may want to change that setting. But for most of the world, that's just fine. As soon as it finishes recording or to, gets to the end of the drive, it will go ahead and restart at the beginning. The pack duration. If you are doing a schedule, which we're going to get to here in a second, of a regular recording, which is exactly the way the unit comes out of the box. It just continuously records all the time. The pack duration is those size of those files that you're going to have. For most people, a 60-minute pack duration is just fine. That means every hour it creates a new file. So you're going to have a file start at midnight, another one at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. throughout the day. Each camera will independently create its own file, but the pack duration will determine how large those files are. If you're in an environment where you're going to be doing a lot of playback, perhaps a convenience store or an area where they really are very interested in doing a lot of playback, you may want to lower that pack duration to about 30 minutes or 15 minutes even. If you're in an area where they're not all that interested in recording, you can certainly expand that as far as 120 minutes. Another setting that's here is the device ID. The device ID is what the unit is called on the network. So if you are adding it to your uh, local area network or to a corporate network, you may want to give it a specific ID. By default, it's set to NVR or DVR if it's an analog recorder. Another setting that's important here is auto logout. By default, the auto logout is set to 10 minutes. That means that once you're logged into the unit, if you walk away from it for 10 minutes, it's going to automatically log you out. That's a great safety precaution in case you're in an environment where maybe everyone has their own credential or maybe you have a covert camera that you want to make sure that, for example, the nanny could walk by and see the monitor and see that camera. However, if you set it to auto log out, it's going to automatically log out and that person will not be able to see. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is the network setups. Now, we didn't spend a lot of time on network setup before just talking about plugging in the patch cable. This is that section where you're going to be able to set the network, network ID and information for your recorder. There is a button here for DHCP, which allows it to pull an address from the router. Once you plug that patch cable into your switch or your router on the network, hitting DHCP is pretty much all you're going to need to do. The router itself will assign an IP address and the gateway to your device. 
and it will automatically be on the network and you'll be able to see it locally. A couple of ports are listed here. These are important to note. Remember the TCP port is what we were using before on the iPad or the iPhone to log in. The HTTP port by default is 8.0. 8.0 is fine for most networks. However, if you're in a corporate environment, you may want to change that. Maybe they're using port A0 for their email server. So you can certainly change that to 81 or 82 or 8080, another available port. The HTTP port you're usually pretty safe with. 32789 is one of the defaults, as well as 3 and 4 sevens. It's a great, great port to use, again, for your DVR. UDP port is used in corporate environments. Rarely we ever see it needed in the, uh, in the uh, residential area, but it's good to know that it's there. By default, your maximum connections are 20, meaning 20 people can simultaneously log in. If you want to lower that number, you can certainly do that by changing it here. Let's go on to the next step. And this is the remote device setting. The remote device is where it actually finds the IP cameras in a network environment. So for example, once I plug my cameras in to the back of the NVR, it's going to automatically show these listed as your devices. Maybe you might be adding additional cameras later that are not plug and play, so therefore you may need to manually add them. If you're working on an analog unit, you're not even going to see this screen. This is just particularly for the IP product. The next section is the schedule. The schedule is extremely flexible. It's something at Clearview that we're very, very proud of. There is not really a scenario out there that the schedule cannot work for. Again, by default, it's set to regular recording. If you want it to just record all the time, do nothing and you're good to go. If you want to create a, a more advert, advanced schedule, you have six recording periods throughout the course of a day. The beauty of this schedule is it is not an all or nothing type scenario like other manufacturers. Each day in each channel, you can do a specific recording schedule. If you want to change it from regular recording to only recording on motion, not a problem. Uncheck regular, check motion, and you are all set. You'll notice the bar on the bottom has gone from green to yellow, and now it's recording on motion. If you want it to tie into your alarm system and only record when the alarm is triggered, all you have to do is uncheck motion and check alarm. Very, very simple. If you want something more elaborate over the course of the day, that's simple to do as well. As long as it, ends at, it begins at midnight and ends at midnight, whatever you do in between is entirely up to you. A lot of businesses, for example, will only record motion after hours. During the day when they're in, they record regular, and then again at night they do motion. Or maybe they'll only record on alarm contacts after hours. And during the day, they'll do regular recording. This is a pretty great function when it comes to actually setting your settings up for a recording. Again, if you do nothing with it at all, it's going to be on a regular record. And with that, you're finished. The setup will complete, and it'll take you right in to add your cameras. Again, if you're on an analog system, you'll manually plug your cameras in. If you're on an IP system, you'll plug right into the, the, the POE ports in the back of the NVR, and you're good to go. Thank you very much for your time. Again, I'm Patrick, the technical trainer at Clearview. Thank you very much, and have a great day.